The Nintendo Switch is generally well suited for playing various indie titles. In particular, the smaller scale of these games combined with the portable nature of the hardware is a great fit for those looking to enjoy unique experiences both at home and on the go. Essentially, the modest nature of these titles allows for many of them to be ported across to Nintendo's low-powered console without needing to be dramatically reworked. Evident in titles like Snake Pass and I Am Setsuna, which although may run at lower frame rates or resolutions, actually appear pretty closely matched in other areas. And the important point is that the experience remains faithful to the original PS4, Xbox One and PC releases. Of course, the choice of engine plays a pretty big role here, with some middleware technologies scaling better across low-powered hardware than others. For example, id Tech 6 is looking great with the Doom 2016 port, showing how high-end AAA releases can work on Switch, while Epic's Unreal Engine 4 also appears very adaptable too. Titles like Snake Pass and Rhyme handing good experiences on Nintendo's console that work really well. And today we're looking at The Flame in the Flood, another title also using Unreal Engine 4, Developed by the Molasses Flood, this roguelike survival adventure sees players exploring a land ravaged by intense flooding, leaving behind a bleak landscape of ruined towns and other stranded survivors. It's a simplified survival game that combines all the essentials like looking for food and water, crafting items and exploration, but it's a streamlined experience, one that can be comfortably played in short bursts, and that makes it a great fit for Switch. It's also an interesting release for another reason. The Flame in the Flood runs with an unlocked frame rate across all platforms, giving us a closer look at how well the game scales from the PlayStation 4 down to the Nintendo Switch version. This basically gives us more insight on how Nintendo's console handles Unreal Engine 4 titles in a kind of similar manner. Could we actually be looking at the first UE4 experience on the system running at 60 frames per second? Or are we better served by a more manageable 30fps target instead? Let's find out. Rather than tailor the experience specifically around the limitations of the Switch, it appears that the developers responsible for the conversion, Curve Digital, has delivered more of a straight port of the game to the console. And that means we're looking at an uncapped frame rate too, although it's not one to deliver a proper 60fps experience. It's a, an interesting choice, one that means the gameplay isn't quite as smooth as it could be, showing the limitations of Nintendo's console. But on the other, the game actually measures up quite closely to the PlayStation 4 game in terms of visual aesthetic, and there are differences between portable and docked mode, with portable mode actually getting additional effects not seen when docked. Naturally, as you can expect, resolution is lowered from the native 1080p on PS4 down to 900p on the Switch when running in docked mode. It's a softer looking game for sure, but image quality actually holds up pretty well due to the use of anti-aliasing, which does help to smooth over any scaling artifacts. So while it may not be a sharp game per se, I think the presentation still appears quite refined, and that's something that the Unreal Engine usually gets right. The feature set is mostly a match for PlayStation 4 in many areas, such as the core artwork. In this case, it's simply the upscale from 900p causing things like texture details to blur slightly, along with changes to how some of the effects are displayed, like lighting. Although scene complexity is reduced a tad on Switch, with certain things like cobwebs missing in some scenes, and the detail on the ground being not quite as pronounced as on PS4. The effects work is also tweaked as well. The depth of field implementation is of a lower quality resulting in a softer look to out of focus areas, but really the big change is with regards to the lighting. There's clearly light sources that are absent on the Switch version when running in docked mode, and this at times has a profound effect on how the game looks. In daytime scenes it's not too much of a problem. The sun casts a suitable visible glow across the surface of the river and surrounding landscape. Not as intense as PS4, but it still looks great. But nighttime scenes can appear a little too dark on Switch, with shadows tending to crush out the surrounding detail, and there's a sense that the game can look flatter and less atmospheric at night, whereas on PlayStation 4 these areas tend to feel a little bit more immersive. What's particularly interesting is not all of these changes are present when running in the portable mode. Take the lighting for example. In portable mode, some light sources are actually re-added on the Switch version, thus making the presentation appear closer to PS4. Details are now more visible in the shadows, and as a result, nighttime scenes are generally easier to see, particularly if you don't have your Switch backlight turned up quite high. 
and it just adds a bit more ambience to the presentation. It's kind of an interesting setup considering that lighting plays an important part of the game. The transitions between day and night, all those scripts, they look incredible, with light sources and shadows beautifully scrolling across the environment. You can really feel the changes of mood as the environment gets brighter or darker. Aside from that, in portable mode resolution is dropped down to around 672p, so the presentation isn't absolutely as crisp as titles running at native 720p, but to be honest this is kind of a non-issue on the Switch's screen. The pixel density here means the game still looks crisp and very clean, and unless you're looking really closely at the edges, you're getting a very refined presentation in handheld mode that looks rather good. The only other visual reduction in portable mode comes with shadows being rendered at a slightly lower resolution. So up close they look a little less stable, but to be honest this is something that is almost impossible to spot when looking at the small screen. So despite some changes, I think the game generally replicates the look and feel of the PlayStation 4 game very well, particularly in the portable mode with the additional lighting. But there's one aspect where the game can't quite match the bigger home consoles, and that's performance. Earlier I talked about whether this is the first Unreal Engine 4 title running at 60 frames per second on the Switch, but that's not really the case. The frame rate here is running uncapped and falls well short of the target, so if you're expecting some super smooth high frame rate goodness, this game isn't going to deliver that. Essentially we're looking at metrics that regularly fall into the mid 40s, although performance can vary significantly, going just above 50 FPS or falling under 40 frames per second, closer to 30 FPS, meaning that there is a consistent stutter across the screen at all times. It's not an ideal situation, although to my surprise I didn't feel that the variance in performance affected gameplay as much as it could have. There are times where I felt that the gameplay was reasonably smooth, there was some light judder but nothing that overly impacted on the experience to a significant degree. But at the same time performance is highly variable so at points the kind of stuttering seemed a lot worse and it kind of made me feel a disconnect with the overall gameplay. Something that's really not ideal and kind of takes you out of the experience. And it's pretty much the same situation in portable mode as well. We don't have the ability to accurately analyse performance but playing portable and docked back to back I felt that the experience on the handheld was very similar. At times perhaps not quite as smooth with more stutter kicking in. Maybe it's that additional lighting causing a bigger performance penalty here. I think the experience holds up very well on the handheld, though it's not to the standard of the full fat PlayStation 4 release. It's not 60 frames per second. I think the thing here is consistency and that's something the Switch version doesn't really deliver, whereas on PS4 we're looking at a mostly solid 60 frames per second. More detailed areas such as the abandoned, ruined towns tend to have things drop to the mid 50s, leading to some mild stutter at times, but to be honest it's fairly rare and outside of some other isolated sort of hitches and frame rate drops, the game generally delivers on its 60 FPS promise there. So it's kind of an interesting setup we're looking at here on the Switch. On the one hand the developer can be applauded in trying to target the experience as is on PlayStation 4. And with portable mode bringing back the extra lighting, there's a sense that this way of playing the game is actually closer to what PlayStation 4 delivers, albeit on a smaller screen. But at the same time, the kind of uncapped frame rate doesn't quite work. You can see why games such as I'm Set Sooner and Snake Pass are targeting 30 FPS, because simply there isn't enough headroom to allow for 60 frames per second with some of these games. Obviously the level of optimization will vary between game to game and indeed different middleware engines, but I guess the point is still the same, that if you're going to be running with uncapped frame rate or targeting 60 FPS, then you really need to tailor the experience specifically towards the Switch hardware. A straight port can work well, but usually 30 FPS is the target, especially if you're trying to keep the level of visual quality to the same level as on PlayStation 4. In that respect I really feel that even though the Flame in the Flood is a generally good port on the Switch and closely matches the PS4 in several areas, running at 30 frames per second would have been a better choice here, delivering a more consistent experience that wouldn't really have taken away much from the game. And at the same time, by having a lower target frame rate, 
that would potentially allow for the extra headroom to be used to bring back those missing light sources in docked mode, rather than the current situation where portable mode actually has some better visual features than when docked. But anyway, the conversion as it stands is still pretty good. If a patch can be rolled out to cap the frame rate, then it's worth checking out this game on the Switch. Anyway, with that said, I'll think I'll leave it there. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.